Hello and welcome to our guide on preparing and cooking rabbit. My name is Marie Taylor and along with my husband Steve and our local warrener Simon Whitehead we will show you in easy to follow steps how to prepare this delicious meat for you to enjoy at home. Although agriculture is classed as a pest species, in culinary terms rabbit is classed as game along with venison, game birds and a variety of wildfowl. It is a nutritional source of food, but unlike other game, it has no legal restraints to its season, so the optimum time of eating rabbit is between September and March. All rabbits shown on this DVD are wild rabbits, harvested using only traditional methods. These can be brought from butchers, game dealers, livestock markets or farmers markets. But unlike the rest of Europe, wild rabbit is very rarely seen in the mainstream supermarket shelves. Although if you know anybody that goes ferreting or long netting, you will be able to obtain some clean and healthy rabbit. And if you're worried about the provenance of your food, at least you know you're eating healthy wild food, harvested the right way and tasting as fresh as only good food should be. Eating wild rabbit addresses some of the topical and moral health dilemmas faced in the production of food. It produces lean, low-fat dishes, has lived a wild and free life and that hasn't been pumped with antibiotics or growth hormones. What, what so many people don't actually eat rabbit is a mystery to me because it's, it's delicious. And one of the problems that uh, most people have is just getting over the actual preparation of this animal. Um, one of the reasons why we made this film is just so that, that people just have a little bit more confidence in what they're doing. From Michelin rated restaurants through to the small country kitchen, rabbit is once more being reintroduced to the family dining table. Variations of regional and family recipes reinforce the versatility of rabbit. It works well with any of the flavours and ingredients used for pork or chicken dishes. During this film we will show you the whole process from field to fork. Simon in the field, Steve demonstrating carcass preparation through to cooking a few recipes in my kitchen. To begin our journey Simon will illustrate the start of the process in the field. To ensure that any meal prepared with wild game tastes its best, especially rabbit, the preparation must start in the field. Pee the rabbit and that just means expelling all the urine from its bladder so it doesn't taint the meat. The first thing I do is inspect the rabbit to see that they're clean and healthy. With a smaller head and, and bright eyes, this is a little doe. She will make perfect eating. But at the end of the ferreting season, all of the rabbits that we harvest will be adults. But during the spring and summer, we will have uh, juveniles, half-grown, three-quarter-grown rabbits. And these are a lot more tender than the older rabbits, especially a, a buck rabbit. Because a buck rabbit, or a male, might be harder to skin, and it might be a little bit more of a robust texture so might need a little bit more of a slower cooking process to get make the most of the meat. What we're now about to do is gut the rabbit which means we need a nice clean sharp knife and all of the knives are sharpened in the field before we start to uh, rough gut the rabbit so we have a one piece knife which means there's no folding bits to be contaminated with any dirty waste and I, I always have one of these knife sharpeners so we can make sure that we sharpen the knives so when we gut the rabbits we're not going to try and struggle with a blunt knife because you're more likely to cut yourself with a blunt knife than you are a sharp knife so we've made sure we've got a nice sharp knife here and we're now about to gut the rabbits of course hygienic is a key word here and my hands, my vehicle, they're far from hygienic so what I do, because the rigours of the ferreting season mean I've got cuts and bruises everywhere on my hands I'm a big fan of using the gloves. So I've got nice clean hands here, I've got a nice sharp knife, what we've sharpened, and I've got a nice rabbit here, what we've just caught. Feel where the rib cage starts, and then get the knife in, all the way down get the, the bottom. the intestines out, pull the intestines out there, in the hole to be filled in. Now because I want to keep the liver, I've just got to find the little bit of skin, holding the stomach in, and pull out the stomach contents. I'll just clean that up there. That's left the liver and the kidneys in there for Steve to finish preparing when we get back to the preparation area. You've noticed that our rabbits are carried around on these specialised game carriers. 
These means that we can attach stuff and carry them around to air or to transport them without having to cut into the meat. Once carefully placed in the cooler box, they are transported back to the preparation area for Steve to prepare ready for sale or for the purpose of this film for Marie to join and use with her recipes. <laughs> Well, has been out, it's got me a few rabbits. I've got some good fat round uh, kidneys here. Uh, he's left the liver in, which is good. Right, now we'll, uh, we'll prep up one of these rabbits for Marie. I'll take this one. Right, I've got a nice clean rabbit from the field. Nice clean eyes. No apparent damage on this rabbit. So first of all, have a look. Nice clean rabbit. Plenty of of uh, fat around the kidneys here. Take those out first. Keep the fat. Always useful in the cooking. And here's the liver. I'll take that out. There's the gallbladder, just remove the gallbladder, take that out there. Right, first of all, uh, we'll remove the legs, so we'll remove the back legs first. Remove them just above the, the knuckle there. Front legs, just remove them above the knuckle there. And now remove the skin. I remove the skin by just working my thumbs between the flesh and the skin. Pushing your thumbs in. With a sharp knife I just cut that through and tear. Hold of it, front to back, or back to front, and I work my thumbs underneath the leg, between the skin and the flesh, and pull. Same with the other one, work my thumbs in, pull. There we go, we'll trim that off in a moment. Same with the front legs, just Work it up over the front legs. Again, working my thumbs between the legs and the skin. Same with the other one. Work the skin up over the neck. Nice sharp chopper. Cut that through. Just trim this little bit of skin off the back legs. Same with this one. Now all we're left with is the tail. I like to just cut both sides of the tail. Cut the other side. And then twist and pull and hopefully pull the intestines out. There we go. Lungs and heart. Remove these. Nice clean carcass.
ready for the next stage. Slight difference with the buck, we've got the sand glands you want to remove, it's the same principle. Sharp knife, go on one side and the other, twist and pull. Quite get the intestines out with that one, so we'll just pull that out. And we have the scent glands here, you can just see them, they're just here, these small little things here. Just pull them off. So this is ready for the next stage, I'm just going to give it a quick rinse off and then that'll be ready for to take into the kitchen for me for cooking. I'd now like to show you how to joint up a rabbit and then prepare it by taking off the sinew so that you can mince the rabbit or use the meat for pies, that sort of thing. We're going to start with the back legs. As you can see, there's a line round from the tail up along the backbone and in front of the hip joint that goes round there. If we follow this line with our lovely sharp knife, round onto the inside, holding onto the back leg, we fold it back to break the joint, and just slice the leg off that way. Turn it over, do the same on the other side, and round, round to the tail, Hold it back, and that's the front back legs. We're now going to remove the front legs, which is very easy to come away. Put the knife underneath the shoulder blade, and just cut them off. Turn it over, hold the front leg up, knife under the shoulder blade. Slice it off. I'm next going to remove the saddle, which is the line of muscles that runs down either side of the backbone. Starting at the head end, put the knife in and angle it slightly towards the backbone and run it all the way down. Easing it away from the backbone and the ribs with your fingers. When you get to the hip joint, just cut around that a bit and with your fingers. Just pull the saddle away, and the same on the other side, angle the knife in towards the backbone, with your fingers ease the meat away from the bones in the ribcage, cut around the hip joint, and pull it away like that, just remove the carcass. I'm next going to show you how to remove the sinew. This is the white covering over the muscles and that does need to be removed because it doesn't cook very nicely. On the saddles, put the knife between the meat and the sinew, hanging onto the sinew. Run the knife up there. And this is just like skinning a fish, if you've ever done that before. Same on the other one, see the white? That does need to come off. Knife between the meat and the sinew. That's now ready for mincing. On the legs, have the bone facing towards you and cut down on either side of the bone. Then you can place your finger and thumb underneath the bone, put your knife in there, cut away the flesh, hanging onto the bone, cut down back towards the front end of the leg or the drumstick end if you like, cut the bone away like that. And to remove this sinew, open out the thigh and you've got three groups of muscles, you want the darkest one, start with the darkest group first. Knife between the meat and the sinew again. 
just cut away from the sinew, turn it round, knife between the meat and the sinew again, hold on to the sinew, cut away the meat. Show that on the second leg. Cut down either side of the thigh bone. Finger and thumb underneath. Cut the meat off. Cut back towards the drumstick end. Open the thigh out. Start with the darkest group of muscles first. Between the meat and the sinew. Turn it round. 